Okay, um, <clears throat> um, I had an accident like nine days ago and I kind of ripped my calf muscle. So it's getting better, <laughs> but uh, still I'm going to be sitting down a lot. Um, uh, last week we talked about chapters seven and eight and that was on labeling and navigation. And um, unfortunately, I'm not sure if the, the sound picked up or not. It may not have. So um, I would recommend reading the chapters. <laughs> uh, we have uh, today, we're and, and I know I had scheduled chapters 9, 10, and 11, but we're just going to do 9 and 10. And then next week, we'll do 10 and 11, 11 and 12. So, um, chapter 9 is about met metadata. And again, I supplement the transparency scenes that were given before because there was just a few. And I also put in some of the images from the book as well. So, so now I'm going to just sit and um, <coughs> can look at the board. <laughs> uh, so, Metadata is uh, an important subject because it's one of the key ways in which we find things. Uh, we're not uh, just looking at the way p web pages are laid out, and we're not just looking at how searches and indexes work, but the metadata is kind of what ties everything together. So metadata is data about the data. And that means that, <coughs> um, that there's various um, definitions that are online, but you can say that it's about the characteristics of the data. It's the, the, the main content that you're trying to be able to uh, index and search for and be able to represent on your web page. So it can be have different attributes like the name and the size and the data types. <coughs> it can be also about uh, who is in charge of um, uh, administering things. It can be about the uh, data as uh, about records and data structure, like lengths and fields and columns, like in a database. It can be about uh, where the data is located. Uh, can include information about the URL, for example, and ownership. But it's basically a description of information that is the main content of what you're looking for. Let's make this bigger. So <coughs> there's different categories of metadata. Some of it is descriptive, uh, describing what you're looking at. Um, we see this on like an index card on the library. Uh, when you're trying to look up something, you will have like the author and the subject and the title and keywords. Another could be uh, administrative, so it has includes uh, what type of <coughs> um, uh, rights that people have to control the data that might be up there. And it can be also technical. If it's a dis like a multimedia file, it can be the, the format of the file, PDF or, um, of, or MP3 or something like that. So it can be the file type as well. So why is it so important? Metadata helps us to locate, navigate, and interpret content. So a lot of, it's a helping tool for a lot of aspects of the information architecture. We're talking about navigation and labeling and, and indexing and searching for things. It's, it's about helping us to actually uh, navigate and find what and interpret what we're looking at. It also helps um, 
uh, organizations to manage content and helps them to manipulate uh, the content. And what is uh, data without metadata? Well, it's just a bunch of, uh, it makes it harder to distinguish what the data is. It's just a bunch of numbers, and we don't know uh, why these, what these numbers can represent. This looks like dates, but we don't know what it's for. So <coughs> metadata without, uh, data without metadata is kind of useless. So we want to be able to know who authored the data and where, um, where it's located and how do you process it, what does it mean. And sometimes data is interpreted through human people, like people reading it and interpreting what it means, but also sometimes it's, um, it's representing information that's processed by a server so that it's this, uh, because of the format that it's in, it, it can be processed automatically. So metadata is important for automatic processing in, in addition to, to human processing. <coughs> so this is uh, an example of a library card. Should get a point. Um, <coughs> so in the library card, you can see it has different types of metadata, which is uh, where it's located in the library, uh, the author's name, the what it's, some content keywords, what it's about, uh, what file type it is. It happens a microfiche is like a film that used to be able to uh, put the books or or text on film, and then um, <coughs> what the relationship is, like what category it belongs in, and then uh, when it was uh, this. When this record was created, for example, the administrative information. So this is an old type of uh, indexing card for a library, and that's metadata. It contains metadata. <coughs> There's a lot of terms that uh, we will talk about in the in this uh, um, way of classifying information. So <coughs> there's different types of uh, grouping of information and how and en en enabling you to find information. So <laughs> we'll talk about each of these. There's examples in the book, and there's, there's figures in the book with each of these things. So the first thing is the control vocabulary. So control vocabulary is like a, a subset of a language. It's some kind of vocabulary that people know things about. <coughs> like if it was a controlled vocabulary about uh, health uh, sciences or medical products, then this would be have its own kind of uh, terminology, and the words would have certain meanings, and maybe the words have different meanings within this um, this area or this subset of knowledge. Then it, it could mean something different in one area than it does in another area. So, um, within a subject field, you might have a set of terms that are um, that might have similar meanings to each other. And those are equivalent terms. And then you could have <coughs> a list of uh, <coughs> uh, words that are the preferred terms, so the terms that you want to use to find something. Um, if you have a, a headache or something here, you might um, look for um, a, a headache tablet like Parasit. And, uh, but in another country, it may not be called the same thing, or if you have a brand name, it may be called something different. So in the U.S., we have these uh, headache tablets for, they call Tylenol or Excedrin or something like that. It's a different brand name. And <coughs> if you're in a customer's database and you're looking up something for headache tablets, you might want to just use the, have the term name uh, that's representing the product be found of be able and enable you to find the product. So there can be a group of terms that are approved of that would be matches in a, in a search. <coughs> so sometimes uh, with these preferred terms, you might also have variations on the terms. It could be spelling variations, or <coughs> it could be just like whole other terms like Tylenol and Paraset and things like that. And then <coughs> you might use these preferred terms for educating users. Uh, teaching them what the real term should be, and you may use it for <coughs> um, setting up more flexible indexes. So 
the term rotation where you have pointers from various combinations of the term uh, to the index content. Uh, there's an example on page 201. <coughs> In addition, you can have a classification uh, scheme or a taxonomy, and this is uh, usually shows a hierarchical relationship. So if you're searching for uh, television uh, sets, you might have um, electronics, uh, televisions, widescreen, and there's sort of like a class, there's sort of a hierarchy there. So <laughs> controlled vocabulary, some of the terms we have here are, are our tools we have are like uh, syn synonym rings, uh, this is a synonym ring, these are words that are close in meaning to each other and that if you search for one you might also find things that are similar uh, that are under the other name as well. So if I want to search for a blender, I might type in the word food processor and also get hits on the blender, for example. And then you might have authority files. Uh, these are the uh, known names for certain products, perhaps. And then you might have classification schemes. And um, so how you would group certain products under certain categories. And the SORI is uh, more, complica more complicated because it has like a whole association system like this, and this really means this, and uh, it's a more complex library. So the, uh, the synonym ring, is, which is figure 9-2, this can be, it shows how queries can be exploded to increase the recall. So the idea is you, you search for one thing, but you get actually a greater number of hits on your, on your search. Um, an authority file, this is the example that I was talking about uh, with uh, the headache tablet. Uh, it would be that somebody types in the word Tylenol, but they spell it wrong. That's actually not how it's spelt. And uh, then they, the, the, when they do the search, they get a match on Tylenol uh, sto store or uh, Tylenol products, Tylenol children's Tylenol. And one is for allergy and is a bubble gum. And another one is uh, for... Um, like a chewing tablet or whatever, but they would get a whole list of products here that have the correct spelling. So in, a, in this case, they're, they're using this um, controlled vocabulary variations on the term to be able to broaden the search, to broaden the hits on the search. And so we have um, a search that is more inclusive, that collects more hits, and also educates the user so that the user now knows that <coughs> This is the incorrect spelling of the product, and this is the correct spelling of the product. <coughs> uh, related terms <coughs> and techniques. So you have taxonomies, and this is um, that uh, you know there's some sort of a hierarchical structure around how you organize the information. And then there's uh, tagging, and this means that you have um, some kind of metadata that's connected to the content. Uh, you may have a document or you may have a video or something and you have metadata that's, that's helping you to be able to find the content that you're actually looking for. So uh, a site like Netflix or some other kind of video programming site, you might search on a keyword and then be able to find the program or the, the, um, the video uh, file that you're looking for based on the metadata that's listed there, not on actually what's said inside the, the uh, multimedia file itself. So you usually have some sort of text metadata file that's connected to the multimedia file. And then you have a uh, thesauri, and this is showing a relationship uh, between terms, how you are able to um, see how the term relates within a hierarchy of terms. And ontologies, uh, this is um, something that's more like a whole way of uh, organizing information. You could have, for example, an ontology for an email. And, you, and an ontology for an email would be that you have a from field, you have a to field, uh, you have a subject field, 
you have the, the text in the main field and uh, if you want a server to be able to process this uh, this file it knows how to process the data that comes in those different fields because it knows what the data in the from field means knows what the data in the to field means automatically and that's because uh, the data conforms to an ontology or an understanding of how you're supposed to process what, what that means in certain fields it doesn't mean if you put a date in the in the to field that's not the email address so it won't be able to process it as an email <coughs> so using these <coughs> types of uh, structures we have increasing complexity and richness as you go down this this requires greater specifications and more rules for how things fit together but then you can actually make more use of this um, <coughs> So um, how are actually these types of taxonomies and tagging control vocabularies and thesaurus are used? Uh, basically, there's um, a semantic gap between what you're maybe looking for and what you're actually trying to find. So you might, for um, <coughs> taxonomies, you might have different words or phrases can be expressing the same thing. You might search for uh, notebook and you find or laptops and, or vice versa. Uh, polysemy means that the word it can have different meanings and um, uh, so it might actually not mean the same thing in a different context and that's why we, we talked about also different types of searching zones. So if I'm searching for fishing equipment and I search for line I'm going to get different types of hits and if I am searching in a zone which is for like communication equipment and I search for line I'll get different hits um, and then taxonomies you try to group similar concepts together so that um, you can create hierarchies about how to uh, locate content within the hierarchy and then tags they're often assigned to concepts and sometimes the individuals can assign tags themselves or sometimes it's centrally uh, assigned. <coughs> Controlled vocabularies are for avoiding ambiguity and that means that um, uh, you want to be able to assign certain words that are associated with certain concepts. And the story represents uh, attempts to better organi organize uh, words and concepts. <coughs> okay. Um, so these are examples of some uh, taxonomies. Uh, they have uh, Linnean taxonomy for li living organisms, web directories, uh, corporate directories, organization charts. So there's kind of organizations for knowledge. So taxonomies are ways that you group knowledge together and create a meaning around certain t subject areas. An example of tagging would be like on flip Flickr, uh, where the popularity of the tag increases the size of the text. So then if more people are tagging things with beach, then that will be larger as opposed to a uh, concert. And there can also be different types of tagging where you just, uh, you don't have this kind of tagging cloud, but you might just have a list of tags with numbers behind them, might show how often they're tagged, for example. So there's different ways of representing that. <coughs> they also have related tags here. So they have different people uh, have uh, tagged. Um, I can't see what actually the search term is here. So maybe it's beach clusters or beach vacations. <coughs> maybe it was on the previous one. Yeah, it was probably beach. And then this is what you get to get uh, access to different pictures that people have tagged. Uh, here's also <coughs> uh, tags for uh, delicious. And I think they have the popularity of the tag, which is listed as the number on the side. 
and they have different tanks. Um, the thesauri are also to try to make a connection between concepts and words and what is the relationship between words uh, are they sim synonyms, are they similar words or do, are they a broader meaning or more um, specific meaning so sometimes words are used to provoke concepts so you might have something like <coughs> MacBook Pro or iPhone and they want you to connect this with uh, with concepts that might be very mm, abstract ideas. So even if you're, <coughs> if you're typing in this, they might want you to get certain products. <coughs> Book of synonyms uh, could be related terms or antonyms or opposite terms. Uh, and uh, you can have different types of associations, equivalent associations. Uh, there's some examples later on. So the SORI types can uh, be used with indexing or they can be used in searching. And I would think that most uh, classification schemes now use the SORI with both indexing and searching together. So it's very rare that it's just uh, one and not the other. So the SORI can be used for organizing, for navigation, for indexing, and for searching. So how do you apply the AI principles? Um, you focus on users and users' needs. Uh, you focus on the content. And then examples would be, what is the difference between laptop and PDA and phone? Um, when, is, when should you use this particular term? Uh, when is a user's um, <coughs> browses a future catalog for, for chairs? And do you show them footstools? So it's in, in other words, it's to help people find what they're looking for, even though there may be a difference between the concept of what they're looking for and the terminology of what they're looking for. So this is more <coughs> about how a thesaurus might be structured. You have a, you're looking for a, a computer, a laptop maybe. You, have, you put in the term a notebook. And you might get a, sim a synonym of a similar term that's laptop. If you want to go to a broader category, you go up and that's computer. And then if you want to go to a more narrow category, you might have uh, different types of notebooks. So the relationship <coughs> is broader term, narrower term, uh, similar term, related term. <coughs> and this is what they show you in the book on page 204, 205 the abbreviations PT, VT, BT, and T. So these are <coughs> basically the PT is the preferred term. And then the VT is the variant terms. And the BT is the broader terms, narrower terms, <coughs> related terms, uh, use. And then um, it has uh, VT use. Let me say associate hierarchical associate. Um, yeah. So the use is equivalent to the virtual term using the preferred term, and the use for is the full list of virtual terms on the preferred term record, and the scope note is the meaning of the term. Uh, to rule out ambiguity. So the scope would be like a description of the term. <coughs> so an example would be uh, if you have a preferred term is sparkling wine, you could have variants on the, on the term and you have more uh, narrower terms and then broader terms. Mm. So uh, exempl uh, examples of content tagging in social media is Flickr. Um, special purpose classification scheme or thesauri, you have the art and architecture thesauri. Uh, you have um, general semantic tools and they have uh, thesauri like 
um, rugged thesaurus. So this is an example of the art and architecture thesaurus. You can just <coughs> click on this and hopefully it still works. So this is the art and architecture of the source. It says the AAT is structured vocabulary, including terms, descriptions, and other information and genetic concepts related to art and architecture. So um, let's say if we write, that's not how you spell that. So classic, I get 23 results. Pre-Columbian, Mes Mesoamerican, things like that. Okay. Um, So I'm able to use these uh, Boolean operators. It says that um, So this, they're explaining their preferred terms, language of the term that may be included, language of the following P as British English P. This means that the preferred term of the concept in the language. So uh, they're actually kind of giving you instructions about how you're supposed to be able to search for information in this thesaurus. But um, I just went back to the previous page. Um, Okay, so like if somebody was using this sensori, <coughs> they may be using it for um, uh, storing information about a particular type of architecture, or they may be using it for helping people that are like doing planning on buildings or on content to be able to search information. So uh, the purpose of them using the sensori would be maybe for guiding people through the information content other types of thesaurus may be used automatically. <coughs> so um, they could be used for, um, like, by programs, for example, to be able to um, 
enable you to like book a flight or something like that. Um, another example is uh, this unified medical labeling system. And it can be used to, for example, group products. And if there's like, there's online catalogs for hospitals and they need to be able to uh, order products, they would be able to group things by using specific labels that are known by by different uh, companies that would they they could be automatically ordered. So a uh, thing like a metathesaurus would combine different thesauri together, and then a semantic network is the relationship between terms, the rules, and uh, how things are going to fit together. Is there a certain hierarchy for words? And then the tools are the lang processing language that might be used to uh, bring together these uh, different semantic uh, word uh, networks. So uh, the, <coughs> the, the labeling system was designed for system developers. It enhances the understanding of medical terms. It overcomes barriers of retrieval for machine readable information and it's various a variety of ways to express the same concepts in the machine readable languages. So it's supposed to be used by programs so that they can understand how to search for different types of medical uh, equipment or products. So it's used in information retrieval and automatic indexing and health records and so forth. Um, and it can be <coughs> also used for distributing information as well. So this is, you can like search on this as well. I'm not gonna go to that page. Any other browser? Okay. So <coughs> the chapter talks about these different types of relationships, the equivalence relationship, preferred term is equal to a variant term, hierarchical relationship, uh, the bird is an hour term than uh, is this followed by the hour term magpie, uh, and the the toe is an hour term than the foot, and then associate uh, related terms, and then preferred terms are the ones you uh, would be able to select and cross map to other terms, and then poly game would be dip the specific meaning of words within within an, uh, within a hierarchy and faceted classification is when you have multiple taxonomies that focus on different dimensions of the content. So they give an example of wine.com on page 223 and 224. And uh, the, the book shows this uh, associate relationship so a field of study and an object of study. study. Uh, the cardiology is a related term to heart. So that's a field of study and an object of study. And then the process and its agent, it's a, an example of that is a termite control is related to pesticides. Concepts and their properties, poisons are related to toxicity. Actions and, and product of actions, eating and indigestion is related to indigestion. Uh, concepts linked by casual dependence, celebration is related to New Year's Eve. Um, a a, 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 a uh, greeting a card is related to Mother's Day or something like that. Concepts can have multiple parents, and that's because they might have different meanings in different areas. And what are the advantages and disadvantages of the relationship in a polysemy? It just means that it's, uh, it can um, enable you to find things from different paths. So um, the, the, the alternative is a faceted hierarchy, and there's, um, the basic idea of the objects along facet hierarchy is each facet has its own associated hierarchy. And we talked about different types of search zones before. These are different facets. 
So here you have um, faceted browsing. You might search for <coughs> a, a television, and then you get um, televisions, flat panels, LCD flat panels, 40 to 49 inches. So you uh, pick different uh, categories within this category, and it searches within this facet or within this range. Uh, faceted browsing in uh, art. Um, <coughs> so you have paintings, and then you have uh, vehicles, and then you have um, um, so I found one. So the advantages of using faceted hierarchies is it integrates searching and browsing. You can go from a search to browsing the results, and then you can go from browsing the results to a more concentrated search. Uh, it's easy to build complex queries. It's easy to narrow and broaden searches. You can go in both directions. And it helps the user to avoid getting lost. And you don't have to worry about just putting things in one uh, strict hierarchy, but you can actually um, uh, put them in multiple hierarchies. So the, why is uh, it that we have to use this um, type of relationships in AI? It's because we want to be able to, <coughs> and ontologists, we want to be able to hide what's going on in the application server. If we put things in a specific structure, then the application server can handle the data as it comes in, and it doesn't uh, it needs to be able to say that if I'm searching to, to schedule a trip, I need to be able to type certain information in the uh, type of flight I'm looking for, where it's departing from, what time it's arriving, and then it can give me answers to these queries. But it means that the information that I type in the certain fields has a certain meaning. Okay. So the, um, the metadata is what's tying together the content of the site and enabling the uh, presentation of the content of the site to the user, and is enabling it to be automated by um, being handled by the application. So we have, um, um, it also helps with knowing where you are, so it helps with navigation. So you have the, the content of the site is, you may be at, at D on the site, uh, but then because of the way it's uh, structured in a hierarchy, you know that you, D is more narrow than C, and it's also related to E. So you can find uh, what you're looking for here, and you know where you are in the hierarchy because of the way the information is structured within uh, the, the ontology. And you can um, get more me meaningful results, results in your searches. So you have uh, searches that are uh, grouped by different facets, and you'll be able to find different values that are associated with different attributes of the content. So if I'm looking for flat screen TV, I get possible values for flat screen TV. If I'm looking for mobile phones, I would get a different facet with different possibilities based on the characteristics of that facet. So um, metadata has um, different types of metadata, different classifications. It can be administrative, it can be descriptive. Uh, and it's also, there's different tools that are used for organizing this metadata. So you can use anything from taxonomies to thesauri. And then uh, these play a role in how you're able to actually make use of these, practical use of these in terms of uh, in searches and faceted searching and being able to come up with um, relevant hits. So we have um, different types of general purpose taxonomies and special purpose taxonomies. The general purpose taxonomies would be like this, um, 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 
lost track of what I was saying. But like the special one would be like the medical one that we were looking at. <coughs> okay. So that was basically metadata. It's um, a rather long chapter. And I think that this uh, set of notes does represent the chapter pretty well. It would take some time to look through the examples that are like pointed to in the web page. You can just look around to, to get an idea of what a thesauri is. Uh, but uh, you can uh, see that metadata is an important part of being able to find uh, information and being able to navigate through the content of a website. OK, um, we're going to take a break. But before, I just want to point out we're going to do um, chapter <coughs> 10, which is kind of the beginning of part uh, three of the book, which talks about um, uh, this is the part where we go into the process of how you uh, research and make changes to your information architecture. So we'll, we'll talk about that in the next set of notes, and we'll just take a break now on that.